So we just did some rhythmic step sequencing with the drums. Now we're going to do some melodic step sequencing with a bass, and then also investigate this side of the controller, which will give us access to control parameters and use effects and do all sorts of interesting stuff. So let's go ahead and create a new pattern on my bass group. The bass sounds like this. This is just an instance of Monarch. Let's actually open it up at the sound level. And you will see that this is Monarch. This comes free with Machine Jam when you buy it. What a great value. Okay. So now, instead of coming to pad mode and playing it here, or instead of coming into step mode and just entering the same steps, we want to actually come in and do something melodic using the shift step to access the piano roll. Now, as soon as I do that, you see that that overlay pops up. And as soon as I touch the rotary knob, you'll see that you can actually set this to a scale. So if I take it off of minor, you'll actually see that everything changes depending on how what scale I'm using. So for instance, I am an E2 minor. This means that all these white notes are the root E2. These are E3. If I want to access an octave up, I can simply come and press up. And now this is E3, E4, down, etc. If I hold shift and use the D-pad, you'll go up and down semitones as needed. All right, so let's go ahead and just enter something in here. And I'm going to go ahead and make a shorter pattern so it's a little easier to control. And let's come step sequence, and we're just going to kind of put in a whole bunch of notes here. All right, that sounds terrible. Why is that? Well, I'm doing a much faster, and instead of a kind of a sustained sound, I'm doing a percussive kind of bass line here. Now, how can we adjust this? Well, we can come to control, and remember, when you're holding control, you're either controlling the sound level or the group level. You gotta be cognizant of that. So when I'm controlling the sound level, I now have control over all these parameters, which let's look right here. In the control page, you can see everything here. So without even really needing to look at the screen, I can control the filter cutoff. Right, and to arrow over to the different pages, we can do that. So let's get this a little more percussive. Let's even bring up the, oh, let's come here and Come over to the next page and raise the oscillator range up an octave. Same thing with oscillator two. And that makes sense. Now, one cool thing that you might want to do is, for instance, make this a little more analogish. Let's adjust the frequency of oscillator two. So you can see it's pretty sensitive. So one thing you can do is hold shift and then you will have much finer control over the parameters you wish. I just want it slightly out of tune like that. So it's very easy to program, and what's nice about a step sequencer or piano roll style like this is that you're not playing it on the keyboard, you're kind of thinking differently, and maybe it's faster, you saw how fast I could write those. So experiment and play with that. What else can we do now? So controlling different options, you can actually hold down control, and you see I have Monarch, and I also have a compressor right after it. So if I hold control and hit down on the D-pad, now I can access the control pages for this FabFilter Pro C. So for instance, maybe I want to adjust the, uh, the ratio, and I can actually just do that right from here. And again, you get used to using these plugins, you actually know where it is, you don't even have to be looking at the screen half the time. It's, it's really kind of impressive. So that's control. What else can we do? Let's actually control Monarch again. Dial it in a little better. Okay, I'm happy with it now. So level-wise, we know if it's too loud. I can turn it up and down. We've already done that. Auxiliary. Auxiliary allows you to actually kind of throw an effect 
chain, for instance, onto an instrument. This is a really good thing to do, especially performing live. So if I hold down auxiliary, again, you're either focused at the sound or at the group level. And on this group, I've already assigned an auxiliary source. And this one is just a multi-effect I have over here on group A2. And what is a multi-effect? Well, it's simply a bunch of effects, one after the other, all set in different ways. Look, there's like eight effects on this one. And instead of trying to control all different eight effects at one time, I can use an auxiliary at the group level to just kind of throw that on and off. Very slick. And maybe that's something you want to actually automate. So how would we automate this? Hold down auto. And do it just like that. Very slick. Now, let's undo that. I don't want that on right now. Another thing about automation is I can actually pin this. So maybe I want to control multiple things from different fingers on the smart strip and I don't want to like try to hold it with my pinky here. I can hold on auto and then hit song and it will stay locked in the pin mode. And now you can see I can even be a little more accurate just by touching exactly when I want. I don't have to necessarily always slide up and down. Very slick. So I'm actually just going to undo that for now. You get the idea. What else can we do? So that's auxiliaries. What if I want to access the second auxiliary slot? I can hold shift auxiliary and now I'm controlling aux 2. And to get back to aux 1, I simply hit aux again. So very slick. Yeah, you can create many different combinations of effects chains and use two different auxiliaries. And then lastly, let's look at the macro level, because sometimes the macro, we saw here when we were controlling Monarch, right? Lots of pages to worry about. Maybe I only want the essential things to control at one time. And so I want a group macro that allow me to do all this. So if you come to the macro page and you come to pages, you can actually create your own macros. So let's come to my base. Let's come to Monarch. Let's come to the filter and assign the cutoff to one macro knob. So this is very easy. I don't have to worry about, am I controlling a sound or group or whatever? I can just come to the macro and adjust my cutoff. Right, very, very helpful. And this is very easy to do. And what I like is you can even space this around. So maybe over here, I wanna go ahead and even use something like a performance effect, which is also on this group that we haven't talked about, but I can also just have it ready to go. Right, very slick. Even that uh, compressor that was on here. We can go ahead and look at the sound level, choose which device, choose the page, and maybe adjust the ratio of the compressor as needed. So very slick. These give you easy access to things uh, in a very fast manner. So especially when performing live, you don't wanna leave too much to chance. You know exactly how to get exactly to what you need to create a nice performance. And it's also useful in the studio, obviously.